And one more time, I want to say thank you to all of you guys for coming and being here. Um, it's a wonderful place and a wonderful opportunity to share and network. Um, the heart, the heart of what we do, thinking about what our next steps are. And I didn't want to share my story when Ella asked us to stand up and share the story, but I'm going to just briefly go over it so you understand what we are and what we're trying to accomplish with the organization. Um, that was able to actually facilitate um, this conference and be part of the People's Clinic and what you're doing through the People's Clinic. And I think it's absolutely phenomenal. And Roger, I'm glad you're still here with us. And Maddie and the Lasting Changes Program and all the individuals that are involved in that. It's, you're all about community. You're all about dedicating your own time, talent, and treasure to get it to forward something that you're passionate about, something that you believe in. So really, we're going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about connecting what everyone has talked about over these past two days, and it's time, talent, and treasure. And everybody talked about you have to have a vision, and you have to have a mission when you start a project, when you start a coalition, when you start a big health ministry, and you have to define what it is you want to accomplish and why you want to accomplish that. So our mission, actually, for the Center for Appalachian Philanthropy is just that. It's connecting people's time, talent, and treasure with the good of community. That is our mission. It's a very broad mission. It's not a defined small thing. We want to help in a lot of ways and become part of activities that really nurture this change for Appalachia. And we believe our vision is to have well-sustained Appalachian communities. Um, when Dr. Wade was here, Han Dr. Hannah was here yesterday, and he was talking about Appalachia. And, you know, in some instances, you hear Appalachia being that place that um, people don't have access to resources. And there are places within Appalachia where people are living like those pictures that he showed us. Very sad, very um, humble existence where people are trying to sustain themselves and they don't have all the access to the resources that they need. Yet we know other parts of Appalachia that are very well nourished. There are lots of resources and lots of things for people um, to achieve virtually anything they want. So how do we connect it? How do we bring together the people that have the resources to the people that need the resources? So that's basically what the vision is. And the only way we can do it is by working together. All of us collectively sharing our time, our talent, and our resources with each other. And you'll see the bottom, the philosophy of what Apophil is over here. We're not Apophil. Apophil is not the organization. Apophil is you. Apophil stands for Appalachian Philanthropy. And our concept of philanthropy, if you know what it means, philanthropy is a big word, and very few people pronounce it correctly. Just like some people say Appalachia, and some people say Appalachia. Very few people say philanthropy because it's a big word, and when you hear it, you think of Bill Gates' money. That's not what it means. Philanthropy means for the love of mankind. And it goes just back to exactly what Ella was talking about, what some of the others were talking about. It's our, what's within us. It's our heart. It's the love we have for the people here in our community. Almost every one of you said your passion was what? People, your families, your community, your friends, your loved ones. I've heard a couple of people say, you know, they want to do this for their children, for their grandchildren, for those coming ahead. So really, the philosophy of Apophil is Appalachian philanthropy. It's for the love of people in the place. Because we all know Appalachia is not that stereotype we see. It's not that always, you know, we see the stereotypes of Appalachia on TV shows. We know that's not our home. We know our home is the most beautiful place on earth. The mountains, the lakes, the streams, the hills, the valleys, the region that we know is beautiful. And we want people to see what it really is instead of what they think it is. We're not the Beverly Hillbillies. We are, we might be hillbillies, but we're good hillbillies. <laughs> so basically what we talked about today in linkages and the whole me um, message of this conference as Maddie was putting and designing it, and I'll talk about Maddie again in just a second. The whole message of this whole program <coughs> is linkages. It's connecting the dots, helping you to bring the right people to the table to work towards your vision. You have to have the right people. You know, we talked about being that 10 in the church, the 10 in your coalition, the right people coming to the table, but you need more than that 10. 
So connecting the dots. And that's what you need to think about in this overall process that you're doing. And facilitating activities. That's what we do through the programs that we run. But you need to think about that too. Facilitating activities. How do you facilitate activities that's going to get you to the end result? Nurturing programs. Programs, again, the programs don't make the change, but the programs are the process that you go through to reach the change. The programs help you initiate three or four things that you can do in a, in a time frame that helps you to achieve your long-term vision and helps you to accomplish your mission. So in incubating new ideas into fruition, we believe we can help facilitate and nurture that and help provide access to resources. Being able to take the grant that Maddie had received, a piece of that from HRSA to be able to provide this resource through this beautiful convention center and bring you all together that's facilitating that activity using collective resources. It would be very hard for each one of you to bring the talent that we have with Ella and Alexis and Patty and all the speakers that spoke today to your own community. So we have to do it collectively together. and That's how you bring the resources together. We believe that an active health ministry is connecting congregation and community. We've said that, everyone has said that pretty much from Diane who started us and Sharon and Diva, everyone has said that. But again, we're working together toward health and wholeness. And this is something that's very important. As Ella was talking, you have to get to the heart. So working together in ministry is intimately touching the lives of others. Because what you're doing in the work that you do is really reaching in and impacting change for someone else. You're pushing it out. It's not for yourself. It's for those you're serving. And I like this one. Health happens. Remember when Patty asked the question, where, where is health? Well, health happens. And health in that broad definition that she's talking about, through connections and experiences with others. How many would agree with that statement? Health happens. We make it happen. We make it happen. The, the obesity, um, the problems, the issues that are going on, is a part, you know, that's the chronic disease that we deal with. But the health, the good side of it, Having the connectivity, we create our own health. We also create the diseases sometimes by our lack of health, our lack of good health. And then, here's the last thing before we start um, talking about what you all need to be doing before you go home. I, this is what I think we all should do. We should make a pact. Let us come together. Let us transform our own Appalachian communities. Let us make a pact with each other to work together, to share our stories, and we all have wonderful stories and share what we're doing, what we're doing, so we can help inspire each other and inspire others in our communities. So collectively, going back to the concept of philanthropy, it's time, it's talent, and treasure. And they all three need to be funneled together if we want that impactful results. So whose time and how much? Well, Marsha passed out a worksheet, and I would like for you to each take that worksheet. And at the bottom of the worksheet, we'll do the top last and the bottom first. Look at the time section of that. You heard today um, one of the things that's involved in time, people's claim, both Roger and Joan, when they got up, they talked about volunteer hours. And Maddie talked about volunteer hours. Well, that's time. And think about all the time that has been invested with the people's clinic. Think about all the time that's been invested with your organization. And think about who's investing that time. Um, when Diva was up, she was talking about the Ironton and Bloom, the seniors that were involved in the Ironton and Bloom, and how they made the community very pretty with the flowers that they planted. Um, Patty, Ella, everybody talked about co church congregations and the faith leaders. So think about the time that they needed. I think when Patty touched on it, she mentioned that faith leaders, we have to be very careful that we don't take too much of their time. Those ten people giving them too much to do. And then, whose time do you need and how much? So if you'll take a few minutes in that section and jot down three or four people in your process, in what you're working on, in the faith ministry or the, the organization, the coalition that you're working in with, whose time and how much do you need to accomplish what you want to accomplish? So just take a couple of minutes, and I'm going to have a couple of people share. Take about three minutes and write down whose time do you need. How many of you thought about how much time it's going to take you and wrote that down? 
Yes, quite a few of you did. And you know your hours need to be multiplied because you know that you can't do this by yourself. You have to be the leader to bring the group together. Let's see, we had from um, someone talk about the physicians and the healthcare workers, both the people's clinic, the dedication of time of the physicians, and the healthcare workers that have been involved. You remember when Deagle was talking about all the activities that they have, and they brought professionals from some of the health departments, some of the hospitals to come into the churches and go to the different places and do the outreach that they've been able to perform. The gardeners, remember we were talking about Ironton and Bloom and the gardeners that donated their time to plant all those beautiful flowers, Diva told us that story. The health professionals that did the screenings. Patty talked about the multiple sector partners, she talked about the involvement of the um, policemen, she talked about the involvement of many, many, many community partners. So let's list the skills you need in your ministry. So the middle column on that, the skills, what kind of people do you need on your team? You think about the goals that you want to accomplish. What kind of people do you need? I need my health ministers to stand up and talk in public. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Do you need some people to make policy change? So some people working on policy change. That might be some of your elected officials to be involved in some of the things that you're doing. Think about the talent that you need. What kind of skills do you need to help you? And this really, you don't have to finish it today, but it is an exercise that you need to think about because you can't start this activity unless you have the right people on your team. If somebody has to write the checks if you gotta pay the bills. If you, somebody has bylaws, they have to record the minutes of the meetings that you have. So you definitely need somebody that likes to do that kind of work. Not everyone does. Especially when you have creative people. Sometimes the creative people don't like to do the work like that. So, but you have to have the people that have the creativity to come up with the ideas. So you need creators. You need visionary thinkers on your team to come up with some of the strategies, some of the things that you want to accomplish. Yes? I need a grant writer. Okay, very good. <laughs> grant writers are important. How many of you would say grant challenges, grant is a challenge that you all have in your groups? Finding the funding to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Anything else? Well, you all be thinking about this, and as, as you go back home, write this down, share it with your group. You all get together as a team and talk about these things. I love the school facilities. I love what they've done in Kentucky to make, we don't know if it's outside and inside or just outside, but to uh, get rid of that liability problem that the schools had on opening up their facilities. That's awesome, that's a treasure. Just think about the resources that are in the school systems, even if it is limited to the outside resources that we can utilize, especially if we're working on health. The places that we can go and the activities that we can carry out. The People's Clinic itself is a treasure. Roger, would you not agree with that? It is a treasure to the community. How many uninsured people are served by that facility? Every year, all the people, and with the partnership of the wellness coaches from the Lasting Changes program, the People's Clinic is absolutely a treasure. There's no charge for the people to go there. And, and the people that are served, it's more than just a basic health, and health checkup. They really get, you heard the stories, they really get served very well. Our churches? Are they treasures? I think our church, uh, the church family, our friends, and the fellowship we have in the church. Yes. They're treasures. Yes. Your spiritual fellowship, your ability to share in beliefs, but also the facilities that they have available as you think about health. You know, most churches have a big kitchen. You can use those kitchens to teach each other to cook healthy food. 
instead of the, you know, the dinners that you may have been accustomed to. So they're, they're treasures. They're treasures in multiple ways, many ways. I love what Patty said today. If you combine all the churches together instead of having a food pantry or a clothing closet, you have an apartment store. Isn't that amazing? If the churches come together and you can guide them to say, you know, we need you to have men's clothes. We need you to have children's. We need you to have these resources. We need your church to start accumulating these things and help people to get access to them. And then the grocery store. Patty was talking about the grocery store. Instead of one food pantry in every church and they're all giving away the same thing, let's figure out how to get people the healthy food that they need. And then what resources do you need for your ministry? I know I've only touched on a couple of them that were mentioned here today, but when you go back home, take time to write down what resources. Did anyone want to share any other resources that you think you, could, you would like to have for your program, for your ministry? Besides grants. Okay, now you have to write down for real. Three goals. What realistic goals? What are three things you're going to do that you're going to go back home and you're going to take from what you learned today? For those of you that were here yesterday and today, write down three things. Three actions that benefit your community. What three linkages to churches for the benefit of your community? Well, I'm going to close um, with the message that was on the front of the brochure. It was in the program, and I believe, you know, we, if we do this based upon Scripture, as we, talk, as we hear Ella, what's in our heart, and we follow how we're led, this is a perfect Scripture for us. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospered. And that's from 3 John 1 2. So think about that and share that. Because we all need to prosper, and our prosperity leads us to health, and we make health happen as we work together. So faith based linkages for health.